My name is Aminata Alice Yajo. Um, I grew up in Sarakunda, uh, around uh, Columba, there's a place called Columba Road. So that was where I was born and I grew up there. And um, how my family was, I would say my, I, I don't come from a very rich family. We're not that well off, but we, we were able to still survive and move on with our lives. You know, like the moderate, uh, the middle class family, I would say. So, but I won't also say that I had an easy childhood um, because I, along the way, I struggled a lot with um, myself. Um, during my school days, so yeah, I had a rough patch, but then again, it is said that to every successful person or to someone who desires success, you must pass through something and you must have a story to tell. So I believe that all my life struggles and all my huddles was expected and it was my story to tell. So I don't regret anything at all because I believe that because of those hurdles, it brought me where I am today. Someone with the desire to achieve success. Um, even though I know that it's going to get tough, you know, the more you go, it's going to be hard. But then again, I'm not the kind that gives up that easily. My parents played a, lo um, a huge role in my life. Because, I mean, imagine a parent, you know, giving birth to someone that is differently able. That reaction, you know, I don't, uh, um, I'm actually, not every parent can, can, can put up with that. You know, giving birth to a child, expecting that the child would, you know, have everything okay or normal, what people consider to be normal, having both hands and legs and everything. But... My parents took me and they loved me, they cherished me, I mean, so I would say like many parents would find it difficult and some would even be depressed with that, but um, it's, it's, it takes a lot for a parent to accept their child for who they are, because I mean in order for the outside world to love your child, you as a parent need to love your child more. And for me, my parents gave me that. I didn't lack that. And I, I'm so thankful for them. My dad and my mom, I don't think without them, I would be where I am because they are a huge part of my life. The fact that they didn't give up on me, the fact that my dad told me that ever since he held me when I was young, he, his first, when he first saw me and he held me in his hands, he told me that day that I would be a blessing to him, that I am already a blessing to him and he would give me all the love in the world. So for me that meant a lot. When he told me that, I was very touched and for that, whatever I do today, I do it for them. I went to nursery school in Deeper Life. My journey of education started in Deeper Life. Deeper Life Nursery School. I started attending, going, I went to school at the age of three. So it was from nursery, and then I went to primary school in Deeper Life. So I left Deeper Life uh, during my fourth grade, and then I moved to St. Teresa's. So I continued um, St. Teresa's from my fifth grade to my ninth grade. So I was there, and from St. Teresa's, I moved to Nusrat. Um, from my 11th, 10th grade to 12th grade. So I graduated my senior secondary school from Newstrat Science. I did science, uh, that's because I loved science, so I wanted to be a science student. So, yeah. And from there, I moved to Gambia College to study public and environmental health. And uh, now I would say that I, I'm a graduate and um, a public health practitioner. My peers, you know, my friends, and even my family, and good people that I meet, 
Okay, because I believe like success is not one person alone. It's a lot of good people coming together, seeing something good in you, seeing a possibility in you and helping you grow. So I would say all the people that I met, all the good people that I have um, relationship, positive relationship with, that I worked with, influence, are huge influences in my life because they taught me a lot. They shaped me to this person that I am. And um, at some point, I would say I won't trade those individuals for anything because people come and go in your life. You know, some come for a reason and they teach you the hardest lessons and some just go like that without you knowing how they went, but then they leave something with you. So I believe that um, each and every person that you meet has a purpose. Or there's this something, there's this wording called soulmates. I call them soulmates. Not that I'm dating them or I'm with them, but they are soulmates because they come to your life, they do something there, they live a, a learning process or an experience with you, and then they just walk away. So those kind of people I call soulmates, and even the people that are within my circle that are, they haven't gone yet, but they are with me, they are all my soulmates because they are positively impacting my life and I'm positively giving back. I would say I've always been someone with an artistic mind. I think that is something I've had for a long time. Um, it started with music and then gradually it went. I always knew that I was someone that, that was artistic in nature because I always, I'm so drawn to, to, to creativity, to things that, you know, I don't so, um, how to call it, commerce oriented or science oriented or something like that. But anything that is so artistic, being in performance or being it art or being whatever, so long as it's, it's creative and it's beautiful because artistic things are beautiful and they, 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 they impact other people's life. They bring happiness, they bring entertainment, they bring love, they bring so many things. So for me, I think that was a natural component. I just had to, the process of grooming it and discovering where I belong was, um, was my journey. You know, and all of that started, you know, at the growing process when I was growing up. You know, it all started because, like I said, I didn't have a, an easy childhood. So for me, my artistic nature was my way of escape, was my way of discovering myself. Every accomplishment meant something, no matter how small it is. It means something because it's, ju it just sh it's a product of my hard work. Because I believe that whatever you do, whatever hard work you do, you need to get rewarded for it because, I mean, you don't want to do something and then only for it to be thrown to trash. So for me, every little thing is an accomplishment because it takes a lot in me. It takes my energy. When it takes my energy or it takes my time or it takes my passion from me, then if the end result is good for me, it's, it's an achievement. And I appreciate every little thing. I don't belittle anything. Whatever, it, how small it is, I take it whole and I appreciate it. So I don't have a favoritism because everything is, 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 is important. Everything in this life is important, no matter how small it is. So every small ac accomplishment, if you belittle it, then you have a problem. But if you appreciate it and say, okay, you're gonna do better next time, you're gonna accomplish something greater or bigger, I know that I will do that. I'm gonna accomplish something greater than what I have now, but it's a gradual process, which I am willing to journey through. And inshallah, I know I would be successful. What would I do differently would be hate myself. I could remember, um, uh, like my childhood, um, I was struggling a lot with accepting my physical disability. I hated myself for it and I blamed Allah so much for it and I really, really am regretful right now. I, I, I always I actually apologize a lot. God, please forgive me for all that <laughs> because it wasn't intentional. That was during my childhood days. You know, I didn't know much. You know, I only focused on what people would say, how they would look at me. You know, I hated stairs. Even though people didn't come to me and tell me what is real what, uh, or give me that bad vibe, but just their stare alone 
frightened me. I didn't like it because I felt like when I was growing up, I was being looked at too much. And at some point, I was being underrated too much. So I felt like a challenge. So for me, how I thought, you know, people were, you know, when you know when you don't know someone what they're actually thinking you start hallucinating a lot of things as if they start thinking whether they hate you or they despise you or something like that not that anybody approached me to tell me that they hate me to my surprise many people would say i like you they would come up to me the mother is like i like you would be right now I'm in a stage where I want to develop with my art. I want to go with it as far as possible. So that is what I'm working on. So my art is something that I want to de develop because it's very rare to find um, many female artists in this country, especially when it comes to the art, the art industry. You get to find a lot of masculinity than femininity. If you find femininity, you can even count the number of femini femininity in art. But for the masculinity, it's so broad. So being uh, among the femininity of art, I believe that um, that is something that I want to develop and want to move to the next day. Because I don't just want me, like just the female in art, but I want a lot of us females who have passion for art and who whose families think that art is not meant for us, that you can't develop in it or you can't find something in it. Because I believe if you have passion for something, you have to work, you have to go through it. It doesn't come just, you can't be successful in an instant. You have to reach out, you have to brand yourself, you have to connect with people. You have to know people who have the same interests as you. So far in this country, it's very difficult for us artists, uh, most especially, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be gender biased to say most especially females, because I would just, I would just say everybody, including the male, the, the, the men, but more on the female section, because in the females, you know, there is this way that, that you know, um, the society expects you to actually act or to actually behave or to act things that, that are meant for you. Because people would be like, there are certain jobs that are meant for females, and we see females being good at it, you see. So it's not like, I mean, just because you're a female, you can't do certain things, or because you're a female, you can't be good at art. Who says art is meant for just men? Art is just there for all art lovers. So if you are a female and, and you love art, go for it. Don't allow anything to stop you, because for me, I am going for that, and I'm not allowing anybody to stop me. And my art is what I would take to the next level. My art is what I would push myself forward with. And if anybody wants to go on this journey with me, you're free to come. You're free to be my guest, because I'm willing to work with every, any female that loves art as much as I do. It depends on what you want. Don't just, but one thing I would also want to advise, know what you want don't see someone being successful at a particular area and be like oh i want to be like her you can be like you can be anything that you want to be but whenever you're going to do something do it because you love it don't do it because you see someone being successful at it don't be a follow follow person be someone with a dream be someone who says i love art for a very long time i've always had that because at some point people will ask you why art what made you love it you need to have a story you need to tell them something genuine don't tell them be someone that sees someone being successful at it because they say one man's poison is another man's i don't know one man's food is another man's poison i don't know something like that so what can be good for someone might not be good for you so knowing what is good for you is important okay so if you are someone you know you see maybe you might see me today and you see me okay being working towards my art journey and you just want to be like that then I won't advise you to, to come to that journey because first, one, one, you don't even know what you want. Know what you want first before going for it. If art is something you really genuinely want, go for it. But if it's not, then find your path. For a very long time since I was going to school, primary school, I would say, because it all started with a book, a pencil, a rubber, a ruler, just the general basic things that people used to draw. So it started with that, it started with drawing. After some time, it groomed into colors. That is color pencils, crayons, knowing how to shade, here and there. Along the way, you move forward. 
things happen, then you start going big. You start using bigger things like canvases or you use drawing books instead and paint with it or draw something, sketch something colorful with it. You know, you start knowing colors, you start knowing compositions, you start knowing the, the important basic components of art. So it's like a gradual process. You, some would say you're just born and then you just know, know it. Yeah, you're born, you know, you're born and then you realize that you're good with colors, you realize you're good with art, and you're a natural. But someone who's not born with that, it's a gradual process. I would say, like, I was born with being an artistic person, but then again, knowing all these things, I had to learn it. I had to learn that skill, I had to improve in it, because it was my, part of my journey, my journey of discovery. So it, it was a gradual process for me. My unique experiences, I would say, would be uh, my music, you know, that was unique for me because I never learned anything about music. There is no school here that, talks, that teaches you how to sing, you know. Sometimes people would ask me, how do you know how to sing, where do you learn it? Trust me, I didn't learn that. I didn't learn how to sing. I could remember one time just listening to... Um, Michael Jackson and I just fell in love with the guy and his music you know I started I think that was the first time I started singing I find myself going with the flow and then came people like Sitting Jaw and and how to Mariah Carey you know I started finding myself singing their songs and wanting to be so good at singing just like them because I loved their music I love their vocality I love how good they were at their song so I find my, I, I naturally, I think that was a natural build for me. I naturally started singing like that, you know. And then along the way, I, you know, I realized that I, I, I can really be good at this part. So that became one of my unique abilities, I think. So, and, and then, you know, other things as well, um, when it comes to, uh, I would say my love for uh, my love for I always had eye for uh, beautiful things like I always try to see things where people are not seeing it you know I always had eye for that um, like spotting out something from from uh, let's say like a, a like an artwork or a painting something like that I always have an eye for looking at it you know beyond measure like spotting things out you know in like a whole huge crowd I always had eyes for that I would say I have good eyes for something I motivate myself my desire my desire to be successful my desire to be someone great my desire to inspire is, 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 is to be someone with an impact. Because I always tell myself, like, I don't want to be someone that would die in this world and then leave nothing in return. I want to be remembered. I don't just want to die and then my history be erased, like, like dust. <laughs> I know I'm dust, but, <laughs> but, but then again, leaving something meaningful is important. You know, knowing that one way or the other, you've touched someone's life, even one person's life, you've, you've touched it and then the person comes and tells you, you touched my life. That feeling is very, very joyful, knowing that you've left a mark in someone. But then again, I'm not just targeting someone, I'm targeting a lot of people because I want to leave a mark. I don't want to die and be forgotten. I want to be die. I want to die and be remembered for what I've done, for you know the good that I've done. I want to give back. I want to be good. I want to be uh, a humble human being, someone lovable and appreciated. Someone that people can say that you fascinate me and that is joy for me. Or you inspire me to do this, to become this, to go there. I'm happy with that. Having that, you know, so that desire to be this, all these things is my motivation. So I am my own motivation. Is my passion for it. The hard work, the energy, that I put in it, the hard work that I put in it, the passion in it, you know, because it takes a lot.
to get out of someone, to pour it into a work. Whoever says art is easy, the person doesn't know art. The person is not even close to being an artist. The person is not telling you the truth. Because any artist you ask, trust me, the person will tell you I am tired. Because it takes a lot of your physical energy. Your back, your hands, being in the same posture a whole day, that's not easy. Taking in, breathing in pains is something else. Because you don't know what chemicals have been mixed in these pains and you're using them. So all of that, breathing them all in, that energy that you take, you know, because along with the work, you have to take precautions. That's why you see some artists will even wear masks for their own health reasons, because they don't want to die in the process. Who wants to die being painting, you know? So all of that, you know, you're doing a risky job because art is a risky job, okay? It's not an easy job. It gives you a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of energy. And especially when you have clients who are so demanding and they're like, I give you this deadline. You have to work this, you have to work at this portion. So imagine you having a sleepless night, reporting to your workplace in the morning, you have to finish that artwork for it to be delivered the next day. So all of that is energy. So it takes a lot from someone. And anybody you see going through this suffering, that person is passionate about his work. So passion drives anything. Passion can get you anywhere. It can make you do something. And I might also say that passion made me finish six artworks in just one day. Six artworks in just one day. And it was on a Sunday, actually. That was the day Gambia was playing football. And then we got knocked out. I was busy watching football, and I was painting at the same time. And I finished six artworks in just one day. I hardly ever do that. No one would even make me do that. But passion did. Because I knew I didn't want to go to a particular place and not deliver. So I mean, that would be a bad name for me you know, as this person who's just starting out. So I think at some point you gotta push the effort and make the work. Challenges will be like art materials, you know, uh, people buying your artwork. Yeah, because uh, not a lot of people or not a lot of uh, people in the country value art that much. You know, some would just say, oh, this looks, yours, this thing looks beautiful. Yes, I know it looks beautiful, but I want to sell it. <laughs> you can't just tell me that it looks beautiful and then you just leave me there hanging. Hello? <laughs> I'm not just looking for the beautiful part of it. Art itself, it's beautiful. Whenever you mix a bunch of colors, you expect a good end result. Most especially when you know, that you, when you know how to play with your composition. So... I'm not looking for the, just the compliment. I'm looking for the, 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 the impact, you impacting or wanting to push me there. But don't just say it's beautiful and then just stay there and allow me to run things on my own, okay? So getting art materials is very expensive because the country is, I wouldn't say, is more of, a, of an art country because, I mean, the art materials, one, they are very expensive. Imagine doing an artwork and then you didn't sell it to the amount that you want to sell it and then imagine from that amount and then you're supposed to go and buy what you've earned to go and buy art materials. It's like you're not making any profit at all because what you put is what you're going to remove again. So there's no profit. There's no profit that you're making for yourself. So it becomes stressful. It becomes depressing because people, you charge them here Oh, this painting I charged you for 5,000, the person will be looking at you. This 5,000. In fact, you, the person will already be running. He's not a serious client because he doesn't know the value of it. He'll be like, I have way more things to put my 5,000 than just a piece of painting. Hello, that piece of painting is the artist's hard work. Maybe you might not know the value of it, but he knows the value of it. So for me, I'm not going to force anybody to buy my work, but it's up to you anyways. It's up to the person. If you know the value of art and you want to help people like us improve or move forward, then you should be ready to like invest in that individual or invest in that person if you're a true client. And we don't get to find many of that nowadays. So that becomes a challenge. I have this saying that you being different able doesn't make you any less of a person. You are as important as any able person in this world. You can do whatever you want to do if you are ready to work and put yourself forward.
Because people will look at you. It's natural for someone who is able to look at you and be like, you can do this. I will give an example of Mr. Bean. Okay, Mr. Bean, I know many of you know him. He's a very funny comedian. Okay, that guy, I know many people don't even know this, but I'm glad to be the first to tell you. But to some who do, who do then anyways, just know it. Mr. Bean was born with, with a speech defect. His stomachs, he's a buzzer, the, 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 okay? So, but Mr. Bean was born with that. And all he ever wanted was to be an actor. He had that long time dream of being an actor. So imagine in a movie industry, like Hollywood, you know, you want to make it there. I suppose it with a speech defect, because in a movie, you, your words should be flowing right. Because the, not just the action is important, but the words. Because you're reading a script, and you don't expect people to come to the TV and watching someone, that, da, 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 even though people just acted, but that's not the way they are. That's if the role requires you to be a person with a speech defect. But that is understandable, because even the director giving you that script knows that you're not someone born with a speech defect. But someone born with a speech defect, it's a different case. And Mr. Bean was having a lot of trouble with that. Wherever he goes, the, the door is always slapping his face. It's shot at him, you know, because they would t the first thing they would, they would in fact ignore his acting skills. They would be like, you can't talk, bro. So how can you be an actor? Imagine telling someone that. So I think for him, he didn't give up, despite that being his disability. He made sure that he, he did whatever he, he could to be in the acting. That's why he came. In fact, he's even the founder of Mr. Bean the director of his own movie. How, if you're a huge fan of Mr. Bean, you get to see that he didn't talk. He allows his actions to do his talking for him. And you get to see that a lot of British people, they value him. They came to, he was able to make a lot of people laugh because that was his mission. He was a comedian. He loved to make people laugh because he understood what it is to be where you are, to be someone with a disability and still be able to find peace with yourself and still be able to make other people laugh. So his own purpose was to make other people laugh and de command respect from them. That was why he came up with the movie, Mr. Bean. He is the sole producer or let me say the sole director of his own movie. Okay, he directed that movie. And he, that was the first movie you could see that he showed people that you don't need to talk in order to be a good actor. Your character, your, 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 your actions should speak louder than your words. And he made that happen. And he was able to make people laugh. And for me, I love that movie a lot. Because he was able to use his body language, even without saying anything, he was good. So imagine a person being so successful at what he does. And now if Mr. Bean speaks English to you, you wouldn't even know that he's a stammer. Because he tried to even improve in the way he talks. He tried to address his speech defect. So if you are someone with a physical disability, that guy should be your inspiration. There are a lot of celebrities that we have that are actually having disabilities. But people don't know about it because they are managing with it. They are trying to make the best out of what they have. Don't see your disability as your weakness. See it as your strength and your challenge. And trust me, you can go far with it, okay? And for me, I would say my disability was my blessing because it won't get me the way to where I am today. So for me, like, it's a blessing for me and I hope it becomes a blessing for you. So work on that journey of discovery if you are someone who desires passion. If you have the desire to want to be so much more than what people say you are or so much more than what you think you are, if you have that desire, then no matter what happens, you must go for it. Because even the able people have disabilities, okay? There must be something that you don't like about yourself. And anything that you don't like about yourself is your disability. It doesn't matter when it comes to physical. It doesn't matter your illness or something.